So welcome back, we start with module 2. So in the previous module, the introductory module, what we have covered is, we have covered uh, the process industries and we have seen uh, some uh, issues concerning intensification and the economics of the process and uh, regarding uh, various chemicals, the base chemicals, then the consumer chemicals, the intermediate chemicals, specialty chemicals. So now we proceed with our second module which starts with the base inorganic chemical which is very important, it is called sulfuric acid. Now as you know the sulfuric acid is a key indicator for the performance of a particular nation. So for example, the sulfuric acid manufacture gives the indication that, uh, that if you have a higher production of sulfuric acid it means the industrial activity is higher because this particular compound is used to prepare primarily fertilizer, then you have its application in paints as a reducing agent and many other applications. So that is why this is very critical and we need to look at it in detail. So in the starting lecture for the manufacture of sulfuric acid, we will be discussing the formulation of the sulfuric acid, the source of the raw material and what are the reactions involved. In the next lecture then we will take up the actual process flow sheet which is uh, industrial modern process flow sheet. So we start with this which is called the sulfuric acid, we will see and look up the key reactions and the thermodynamics. So what we have, we will briefly discuss the inorganic chemical industry. So as I told you the inorganic chemical industry constitutes of the ammonia, then it has the sulfuric acid, these are the two major inorganic based chemical because from here you can manufacture many other compounds. So we focus our attention on sulfuric acid, then we talk about the reactions and the thermodynamics. So in the course of this talk, I will also just take you briefly back to its history of manufacturing because uh, we have two different processes and I will discuss those two different processes and also the advantage and disadvantage associated with each process. So focusing on the inorganic chemical industry. So what we have already seen in the introductory module is these are the components so sulfur, nitrogen, phosphorus and chloralkali. So sulfur is uh, obtained, so we have to find out these 3, 4 atoms and then chloralkali where are its source from. For example, in our case the sulfur is the raw material for sulfuric acid, where is it found? It is found from mining. So because we, you know they have different types of ores for them from the pyrite ore, okay. The pyrite ore are the rich source of mining. Then also in metallurgical ores you have source of sulphur. So all this needs to go through a series of pre-processing steps to gather sulphur. So sulphur means you won't get a direct elemental sulphur, you will get the sulphur in form of some gas, the hydrogen sulphide gas and from there you use a set of reaction or you convert it to elemental sulphur. So it is also a major uh, product from oil refining, I will say not a project product, it is a byproduct. The so byproduct means if you uh, recall even though the oil refining, the oil industry is not covered in this particular subject, but you must be aware of this hydroprocessing reaction. Hydroprocessing reaction means these are hydrotreating reactions which includes hydroxyl sulphurization and hydrodenitrification. What are these hydroprocessing reaction? It is nothing but you add hydrogen to the aromatic sulphur compounds and aliphatic sulphur compound. Now the aliphatic sulphur compounds are very easy you know to convert to the straight chain, but the aromatic ones are very difficult. So needs a high temperature and pressure, but eventually what you have is you convert these to a straight chain, you make it unsaturated and then uh, you try to get the hydrogen sulphide gas as the byproduct from these reactions. So these byproducts are then again converted within the oil industry only. For example, uh, what I will cover next is a typical flow sheet for in Indian oil corporation. What they do is that the hydrogen sulphide gas which is a byproduct of the hydrotreating reaction, they convert it to elemental sulphur. So we will see those. Then from air uh, for nitrogen we will take up later the air it separates out, it's a, I mean it is will be a, a cryogenic application, you have separation of nitrogen and oxygen. So you separate out, get nitrogen and from that nitrogen again you use hydrogen, hydrogen combine them, find nitric acid, ammonia and you know these are very important compounds because nitric acid are used for the fertilizer industry, sulfuric and nitric acid both. Then uh, phosphate rock 
is one of the ore in terms of inorganic chemical you get elemental phosphorus from the elemental phosphorus you use phosphoric acid ammonium phosphate and you know these are again a vital ingredient for fertilizers. Then you have sodium chloride as a source and chloroalkali industry as the product and chloroalkali you know you have chlorine gas and sodium chloride we are used to make caustic soda and chlorine and chlorine you know you have lot of application. So, it is a bleaching agent and other application industrial application ok. So, you need to I, it mean it can be used as an intermediate product or intermediate chemical from where final products may be formed. So, these are the four uh, different inorganic chemistry or inorganic based chemical which we will be covering in this module. So, we start with the sulphur one especially sulphuric acid. So, sulfuric acid uh, so uses we should also see what are the uses for major inorganic chemicals. So, we have already discussed this uses the so sulfuric acid and ammonia or nitric acid common is the fertilizers. Then it is also used for copper leaching and alkylation in oil refining in alkylation means uh, if you want to make alkyl group form alkyl group you need a this as a catalyst acid catalyst. So, this use as a catalyst medium in oil industry, then pulp and paper industries, then uh, ammonia and nitric acid if you consider it to be used in explosives because you have nitrotoline, you can form nitrotoline from this ammonia, then from nitrotoline you can form trinitrotoline TNT this is explosive. Cyclohexanol this is a basic raw material for nylon 6 or nylon 6 6 ok because it is converted to adipic acid and you know nylon how prevalent is in the current scenario. So, as I told you it is used for making nitrobenzene, nitrobenzene is a, again a vital uh, compound from here you need to make the nitrobenzene is also used to making you know poly, uh, so polymers for example, polyurethane all those compounds where you have CONH grouping those are called polyurethane polymers. So, it has been used in foams and plastics. Then chlorine gas uh, it is a basic raw material for polyvinyl chloride polymer for HCl production as a cleaning agent. Then finally, the chloralkali. So, alkali is sodium hydroxide is used for disinfectant which is taken in the form of sodium NaClO and paper industries ok. So, these are the various uses for the inorganic chemical. So, we start with now sulfuric acid. So, if you see this is a production worldwide production I think this is in the year of 2010 is a from the same book as Molin. So, if you see the production is in megaton in y axis and x axis is the inorganic based chemical you see these two ammonia and sulfuric acid are the major production worldwide uh, 160 megaton and then, then comes nitric acid chlorine NOH. So, the production of these two the sulfuric acid and ammonia is thus vital to gauge the economic indicator of a country ok. So, how good the country's economic activity is going on. So, that is why it is the largest volume chemical produced currently. So, yeah I just find forgot to mention that when you see this green color it implies that most of the sulfuric acid and ammonia produced in the worldwide is used for fertilizers ok. Similarly, for nitric acid also most of them they are used for fertilizers while for chlorine as I told you these are the monomers for PVC and sodium hydroxide is a well known starting compound for paper manufacture. So, we go to the initial uh, development of the process for sulfuric acid. Now, this sulfuric acid process is called lead chamber process this was developed way back 200 years back, but let me tell you briefly about this lead chamber process. What they do is basically they take the ore sulfur they convert it to sulfur dioxide in a combustion chamber. Once the sulfur dioxide is combusted the sulfur dioxide is then reacted in the presence of a catalyst what this catalyst is the nitrous oxide NO. So, this nitrous oxide is again regenerated during the course of this reaction. So, when this sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxide or NO nitrous oxide are combined in a liquor which is previously made they get converted to SO3 and from the sulfur trioxide you react it with water and the acid already present to get sulfuric acid. But there are some disadvantages we will focus on that first let us see what are the reactions. So, initially you have the pyritic ore you have the ore here the ore 
So or if you do, you suppose the elemental or is S8, you do a balancing on the oxygen, sorry this is, this is 8 moles of oxygen to give combustion, you give 8 SO2, okay. You start with a pyretic ore, okay. So now this what they do is let us suppose you have uh, the is generated the elemental sulphur if you see then the pyretic ore FeS2 combustion also occurs with it uh, itself, it will form so 11 moles of oxygen reacts with the pyrite ore to form Fe2O3, Fe2O3 plus 8 SO2. Now already SO2 is generated. Now you yeah, just just do some balancing. It is two, and here comes four. So these are the reactions which takes place in the combustion chamber. So the ore, whether it is elemental ore or pyritic ore, gets converted to sulphur dioxide, which is a gas, which escapes here like there. Okay. So this is the part where the ore is burned. Now what do you do with the sulphur dioxide? You introduce it to a chamber. Now this chamber, the name suggests lead chamber. The lead chamber process means lead is why they have used because this sulfuric acid formed is highly corrosive in nature. In order to help the production, you cannot use some other material, so that is why lead has been used. So now how does the nitrogen oxide, as I told you nitrogen oxide is as a catalyst, how does it get produced? They produce by the decomposition of nitre, nitre is again a ore of nitrogen. So if you have the nitre ore, nitre ore. So this is sulphur ore, when I talk of sulphur ore, it means it can be either be this sulphur, elemental sulphur or pyrite. When nitre, what happens is you have the sodium nitrate, for example, nitrite here, it reacts with sulphuric acid which is already present inside the lead chamber. It gets uh, to sodium sulphate, Na2SO4, sodium sulphate plus water, plus NO, plus NO2, plus O2. So now you see you are getting both nitrous oxide and nitrogen dioxide. So this nitrous oxide then used as a catalyst. So you can balance it, you give 2 moles of sodium nitrate and the remaining gets balanced automatically. Or sometimes this nitrosyl sulfuric acid, so the formula here is I just balance it and write the entire equation, NOHSO4, so this is term as nitrosyl sulfuric acid. So this also reacts with the water present in the chamber to have only sulfuric acid plus NO plus NO2. Where does this sulfuric acid come from? This sulfuric acid already is present in the chamber. So if there is a sulfuric acid present in the chamber, it can react with the NO which is present to form NOH2SO4. Those reactions, I will come to that later. Then once this is done, what you do is the sulfur dioxide and the nitrogen dioxide is then inserted on the top of the chamber inside a lead chamber where already liquor is present. So what are the reactions happening? in the lead chamber, so lead chamber what are the reactions happening? So nitrogen dioxide is hydrated to nitrous acid, so nitrogen dioxide N2NO2 this will be hydrated means it reacts with the water present in the liquor to form a mixture of nitrous oxide and nitric acid, okay. This nitrous oxide or nitric oxide then the SO2 which is already there in the aqueous phase because sulphur dioxide is again absorbed from the combustion chamber into the lead chamber, it reacts with the nitric acid and it forms NOHSO4. So this can, is called as nitrosyl sulphuric acid. So this is nitrosyl sulfuric acid, this is one of the red determining step for the lead chamber process. So that is why this NOHSA4 is formed here, here. So it is formed from the process which is there in the lead chamber. Now what happens is that this NOHSA4 then again 
NHSO4 reacts with the nitrous acid HNO2 reacts with the nitrous acid to form sulfuric acid H2SO4 plus again nitrogen dioxide plus nitrous oxide. Okay. So, you have set of equations which are governing. So, then the sulfur dioxide in the aqueous phase again reacts with sulfur dioxide in the aqueous phase which is in the lead chamber again reacts with the nitrous oxide. I am just balancing and writing the entire equation you may check if the balance is correct it full form sulfuric acid plus 2NO. Now you see we are generating again NO. So, NO is consumed as well as NO is also generated. So, now how it is again generated or it is consumed because the nitric oxide will escape from the reaction liquor. So, it will escape from the reaction liquor and then again react with the oxygen present because the oxygen is present in this reaction. So, this NO when it reacts when it goes up in the chamber itself again it will react and it will form back NO2. So, 2NO plus O2 will give 2NO2. Okay. So, see now again you are getting NO2 generated. So, NO, so if you see they are regenerated in the process so overall there is no consumption of NO. So, we can say that NO is a part of catalyst. So, what is the overall reaction which is happening? Which is the overall reaction is 2 of SO2, 2 times SO2. If I write all the equation together, it is 2 times SO2 when reacts with water and oxygen to form 2 times or 2 moles of sulfuric acid. So, this is the overall reaction for lead chamber process. So, what you have is you have a chamber within that you have liquor, then the liquor you are spreading the sulfur dioxide and nitrogen or dioxide from the top. Then let the reactions which are present in the lead chamber, these are all the reactions present in the lead chamber happening and in the process NO is again regenerated. So, NO nitrogen nitrous oxide is used as a catalyst. So, this was going on, it is so strong this particular process, it is going on till date also some plants are still using this, this lead chamber process, but it has some disadvantages, we will talk about that. So, the method is old, the lead chamber process, but the only thing is it is a homogeneous catalyst. So, unlike the contact process we will discuss later, this is a homogeneous process, it means the nitrogen the gas phase reactions takes place, so single phase reaction. But the amount of acid you can produce is not more than 80 percent. This is one of the biggest challenge. So, you need sulfuric acid more than 80 percent, then you are not able to use lead chamber process. You have heard the term called oleum. So, oleum is something which is amount of sulfur trioxide in sulfuric acid. So, if it is more than 100 percent, then you say if it is let us say 117 percent, you do not say 117 percent sulfuric acid, you say 17 percent oleum. It means 17 percent of sulfur trioxide in sulfur 100 percent sulfuric acid. So, that is what you cannot produce oleum. You must have heard this term oleum. Due to this region, there was specific improvement and then the contact process was formed. In the contact process is a modern method and use a heterogeneous catalyst. So, the heterogeneous catalyst means the catalysis is a two different phases, the catalysis is occurring. So, this is a double absorption process because the issue is here initially in this contact process, I will discuss this contact process in the next slide. The platinum was very costly and it leached from the mixture. So, a better uh, the scientists have then research, they did some research and found that vanadium pentoxide supported on a porous support gives a better lifetime. So, the catalyst can be reused after 20, 20 years it can be till before replacement it can go life cycle is 20 years. So, that is why this catalyst were replaced by vanadium oxide. So, let us go through this process. Now, the important process is whether you are using lead chamber or in contact process. Now, I will focus on the contact process which is what most of the plants in worldwide are using. Contact process will use 
the sulfur from the oil, oil refinery. So, the we need to see what is the source of this sulfur for any of this process. For contact process, let us go to the next slide. So, what are the source of sulfur? I just told you it is a byproduct of oil refinery, spent sulfuric acid and sulfur compound in the form of hydrogen sulfide and iron pyrite. Iron pyrite I already explained in the previous slide from iron pyrite if you do a oxidation it will form the sulfur dioxide directly, but we know it is elemental sulfur for the contact process to run we need elemental sulfur. So, where does this elemental sulfur come from? So, as I told you in this particular point is a byproduct of oil refining. What are those byproduct? This is called hydroprocessing reaction. Hydro processing. It means hydro treating. Hydro treating means what? You remove the heteroatom. So, this is suppose you have this merceptan RSH, you make it with hydrogen, do a hydrogenation, it will form a straight chain compound and you have H2S gas. So, this is one of the source in the oil refinery. Then or you can have a compound such as thiophene. So, thiophene is one of the major compound in this crude oil because now you know this crude oil uh, is a big problem because of this current scenario. Uh, the, the crude oil which we get from uh, in India, uh, we as you know 80 percent of the crude oil is imported from outside 80 percent, but 20 percent is still available in India. So, some of the parts which you know which is available is in the northeast which is the Assam you have number of refineries, those oil have low sulphur content, but those which are coming nowadays which is from Krishna Godavari Basin in Andhra Pradesh or nearby areas, there are very high sulphur content or those which are coming from Gulf or some West Asia, they have high sulphur content. So, you have a good source of this H2S. So, that is why this hydroprocessing reaction is a vital step or vital clog in the oil refinery. So, what they do is they will treat this, they will remove the heteroatom, heteroatom here is sulphur nitrogen, then convert it to H2S. So, that is why these are the heteroatoms. So, it may be in the form of mercaptan, thiophene or multi aromatic rings. So, again if you do a hydrogenation on this, it will form a stretch this compound and H2S or then there is a dibenzothiophene. What is this dibenzothiophene? You have two benzene ring within the sulphur atom. So, you have the two benzene ring, you have partly saturated here. Again you do hydrogenation, so I did not balance here 3 times, 5 times of hydrogenation, 5 moles of hydrogenation. Then you form a compound such as like this, okay. So, these are the set of reactions A, B which happens in an oil refinery where while hydrogenation is conducted, you get self hydrogen sulphide as the gas, hydrogen sulphide gas. Okay. Now, this hydrogen sulphide gas can be burnt in a combustion chamber and you get elemental sulphur. So, that is called the class process. We will see the production of this class process in the next uh, few lectures. So, this is the way. So, overall, uh, how does this, these are this what they do in the oil refinery it left all this this one, this product self H2S, the overall reaction which occurs is twice or moles of H2S plus oxygen S2 plus. So, this is a one of the elemental sulphur S2, it can be S6, S8 as you know there are various forms of allotropes of this sulphur. So, this is a highly exothermic reaction, it is around 444 kilojoules per mole. Okay. This is the overall reactions which it converts. So, this is the source of sulphur. Okay. So, this is called partial oxidation. So, it is called partially they are oxidized. So, in the contact process, as I told you, we can get a concentration ranging from 33.33 to 114.6. And oleum is the mixture of sulfuric acid and sulfur trioxide. The strength becomes more than 100 weight percent, then and only it is called as oleum. So, 112 weight percent, I told you, 12 weight percent free dissolved in 100 weight percent sulfuric acid. This is the way you name them. 
Now this is uh, from the typical refinery specifically from Indian Oil Corporation. What they do is uh, they have the feed. What is this feed? Feed is, uh, no, no, this is a feed where uh, the rich amine based feed is where is have H2S because H2S gets absorbed in this amine. And what is this amine? The amine which is we am talking about is MDEA. It is methyl, methyl diethanolamine, di methyl M D E for ethanol, A for amine. MDE. This is a very sulfur recovery unit, SRU, we call it in the oil refinery, SRU, sulfur recovery unit. This is the integral part within the refinery. So, what you do is you store the rich amine which has sulfuric hydrogen sulfide gas, H2S gas in it and then send it to flash drum. What happens in the flash drum is you separate out the hydrocarbons. You do not separate out essentially here, but you tends to dissolve the hydrocarbons in another, uh, you separate out because of the flash condition. Now for the separation of the hydrocarbons, you do this, send it to a stripper column. The stripper column, the temperature is around 127 degrees Celsius. Uh, when you pass this to a stripper column, you then have a lean amine recovery. So the amine, lean amine means the H2S gas which was present initially where we have termed is rich amine, it is absent, so it is lean amine. So now all the H2S gas is in the form of gas which is at the top of the stripper. So this is a liquid which is the hyd primarily hydrocarbons which is taken out from the bottom of the stripper column and the hydrogen sulphide gas then it is cooled and then it is sent to a knockout drum. So in the knockout drum what they do is they separate out the gaseous and the liquid part. The knockout drum primary aim is to separate the gaseous and the liquid part. The liquid part is then separated out here, it is called sour water, this is sent to treatment unit because there may be some sulphur still present in the liquid part, it may be used for further treatment. And the gaseous part, you send it, the gaseous part what happens when you do a knockout, you have almost 90 percent of hydrogen sulphide gas in it. Then you, what you do is the main combustion chamber. The main combustion chamber, what you do, the purpose of this is you burn it, you burn the gases in oxygen. The temperature kept is around close to 260 degrees Celsius. So till now we are only recovering H2S, we have not come to elemental sulphur. At this particular temperature, around 60 percent, around 100 percent. So what happens is, let me just re repeat. So when it goes here, uh, when you do this knockout drum, almost 100 percent sulfuric acid, sorry not sulfuric acid, 100 percent of hydrogen disulfide gas is sent to the main combustion. And when you do a combustion with the oxygen, almost 60 percent of this hydrogen sulfide is converted to elemental sulfur, okay. So that reaction as again I will write you down H2S plus SO2 plus O2 it will give you elemental sulphur plus water plus SO2, okay. So what happens is we have the gases, in the gases you have a H2S because I told you 90 percent of H2S remaining will be, uh, most of them will be accompanying sulphur dioxide. So when you have the sulphur dioxide, this reaction although it will be almost be negligible because I am writing here 100 percent, but if there is any sulphur dioxide which is present, it will be combusted and forming the elemental sulphur. But it is only 60 percent, what you do is you want to convert to 100 percent, then what you do is you send it in a series of reactor where this reaction occurs, okay. You cool that, you cool that and you send it to a sulphur lock. What is this sulphur lock? it will prevent the escape of gaseous sulphur. It will only prevent or allow the liquid sulphur to pass through, okay. Pass the liquid sulphur to pass through, then it is kept in a sulphur pit. The sulphur pit means you, the temperature kept is around 140 degrees Celsius, it becomes liquid and then finally transported to sulphur yard. So here all the sulphur, elemental sulphur is sent. So the flash point here is around 116 
degrees Celsius while the boiling point of this elemental sulphur is around 145 degree Celsius in the case of sulphur here. Now the in the series of reactors other than SO2 we have the tail gases. So the gases will be exhausted you see there is elemental sulphur in liquid form then you will have SO2 and there are other gases also. These gases may be also be present carbon dioxide then you will have carbon monoxide then you have NOx and you may also escape with some elemental sulphur. So this tail gas when they will pass through this they will again get burned or incinerated at around 600 to 780 degrees Celsius they will be incinerated so that the remaining gases goes out. So the only issue is whenever you do this this tag gases before releasing the environment uh, we need to follow some certain regulation because the sulphur dioxide SO2 gases is around uh, allowable limits whether it is any uh, industry it is around uh, 2 kg per ton of sulfuric acid produced. So we should remember that the this for sulfuric acid production it is 2 kg. So there will be a similar legislation in the case of sulphur production. So moving ahead, so once you get the elemental sulphur then you are ready to manufacture sulfuric acid. So what are the reaction involved? So you have the elemental sulphur, you react with oxygen to form sulphur dioxide. So this is an exothermic reaction. So obviously as the reaction proceeds, so higher and higher temperature will reduce the conversion. Then this is the most important step in the contact process. Sulphur dioxide is to be reacted that is completely reacted, I will say not reacted, not partial, completely react to sulphur trioxide. Why? Because if some sulphur dioxide is remaining, so what it says is you can only throw around 2 kg of sulphur dioxide per ton of sulphuric acid produced. This implies that the conversion should be close to 99.7 percent. This is very important that is why the industries design the plant in such a manner the conversion is around 99.7 percent. But the issue is again this is exothermic. So what will happen? So as the conversion proceeds in the forward direction you are, you are producing something and you are increasing the temperature. The temperature will increase, if the temperature increases then the backward reaction will start. So is there any way out? Because the third step is very simple, it is a contact process. So contact process means that is the name comes from the contact process means you make the gases, the sulphur trioxide gases in contact with water, not the other way around. Because other way around it may explode, you contact the sulphur trioxide with water. So this is pretty simple and you form sulphuric acid with various range. The only issue is with re this reaction. When you do this reaction, you need to take out heat you need to, so this is a catalytic processor, here you have this vanadium pentoxide. So issue is you have to release the heat from the intermediate states. So what they do in the contact process is that they use beds of catalyst and the interstage cooler, they cool it and then they, so that it goes to the forward reaction. So at least you get this much conversion. So uh, excess air and dilute SO2 is a favorable condition for the complete oxidation of sulphur dioxide. So a case study if you see the effect of temperature and equilibrium conversion of sulphur dioxide, so this much temperature will have a conversion of 99 percent. So you need to keep the temperature in this range. But the problem is if you go on carry on the temperature will increase in this direction. But if you increase it, let it increase, if you do not take out heat then uh, you know your conversion will decrease. But increasing conversion means that you will have more SO2 escaping from the stack. So this is based on a condition, this particular reaction where you have sulphur dioxide 8 mole percent, oxygen and nitrogen inert. So low temperature favors sulphur dioxide conversion due to the exothermic nature of reaction. The thermodynamics and the kinetics of sulphur dioxide conversion is compromised for selection in the operating temperature. So multi-stage reactor can provide the desired conversion favorable temperature condition. So practical operating range is 670 to 800 Kelvin. So maybe in the next lecture what we will see is how this interstage cooler in a modern sulphuric acid plant is designed. So it is very important, okay, you have to keep this conversion near about 99 percent. So you need to keep the temperature in this domain, so you remove the heat, remove the heat 
periodically from different beds keep the conversion to be higher. So, you please go through the process flow sheet, I mean we will be seeing this process flow sheet in detail. So, everything whatever I have covered is uh, available in this book, this is our basic textbook, go through this book. So, on uh, the next lecture what I will do is with this interstage cooler I will discuss and we will also see how it affects the thermodynamic conversion and also the rate of the reaction because we have to see two aspects thermodynamically some reaction may be feasible, but we are to have to see kinetically it is favorable or not. So, we will see those aspects, thank you. Mm -hmm.